I'm Delali. This is Mess Post TV, and I'm bringing you the match, uh, the review of the match or the most anticipated fight of the year: George Ashi, the Red Tiger versus Robert the Stopper Queen. And this fight was very, very electric. The atmosphere was energetic. You can just have a look at the crowd, how they were chanting, and it was action-packed fight throughout, and it was worth. It was worth the wait. This fight has been building for over 10 years now. And now it has happened. It has happened. Robert the Stopakwe versus George Ashi the Red Tiger. The fight happened on the seat of March. And the Vice President of the Republic graced the occasion. So did the Minister of Youth and Sports and the, the Mayor of Accra. Then... The operations director, the presidency, Lord Komi, they all graced the occasion. And it was a very, very nice atmosphere to be in. I got to the arena at 11.05 a.m., prepared with the Ace Power promotions team, and, I th and together with the Ghana television broadcasters. And we did, I think we did fairly well to give ourselves a pat on the back that, no, it was a good production throughout. Most unfortunate, you did not get the interviews, but hey, the whole thing was epic. It was well organized, and we, I think, the whole team delivered, especially box office sports promotion and Probellum. They were the promoters of the night, and I think this is the best. This is the best production I've seen in Ghana. The setup, the lightning, and everything were epic. Now to the ring walk from both fighters. Both fighters took a long time to walk into the ring. Uh, the dignitaries like Asamoajan, the vice president, and all the VIPs, the VVIPs that were in the ring waiting for them. Robert the Stopakwe took over 15 minutes to walk into the ring. He came in on a horseback with some antis, dressed like a Spartan, and he did not look himself. He was off. I, I don't know why, but right from the walk, Right from when he got to the uh, arena, if you watch this blogger, Gamashi blogger, you could see that there was something wrong. I will post uh, the video from Gamashi blogger. You could see that at the latter stage, Robert seemed awkward. I knew there was something wrong. I knew there was something wrong. But let me go into let me go to the entrance of George Ashi. George Ashi was held shoulder high he was portrayed as a winner before the the bout even commenced and he walked into the ring he took a lot of time so he did not get to meet the vice president the vice president has stood there for long and he had to take his seat so the only dignitaries that were in the ring at that time was lawyer peter zwenis sasamwajan the promoter himself the, the gba president abraham kote nikwe I quote it, they were in the ring waiting for him and he came in and referee Roger Bano, the most experienced referee in Ghana, was in charge of the fight and I think it was an epic fight whilst it lasted right from the get-go. George Ashi walked his man down. Though Robert is the bigger man, George Ashi walked him down and this is the tale of the tape. George Ashi is undefeated. Um, George, jo jo sorry. George Ashi has lost five, five times, but he is a Commonwealth champion. He is 37 years. Age is not on his side. Robert, the younger fighter, undefeated. And this is how their record stood before the fight. The fight started, and, and the smaller man, whom is in the person of George Ashi, walked down the bigger man. The bigger man was trying to box from a distance, but Robert did not have his job working for him on the day. If he wanted to box from a distance, he, you must have your job working in for you because that is when you are able to keep your opponent at bay because when your job is working, he, you are taller, you are ranger than him, you can keep him at bay with your job. But Robert's job was nowhere to be found. And George Ashi was walking him down looking for the power left hook all night in the first three in the first two rounds he wasn't landing and then i think that why doesn't he come behind the job disguise the left hook before he lands it but at the end he landed it in the 
third round. No, he did not land the left hook. He ran. He landed the right hook in the in the third round, and he damaged Robert the stopper. I think he should have stopped him there. He should have stopped Robert. Those, he should have stopped Robert in round three, but referee Roger Bano intervened. I think the doctor took a long time in assessing in assessing Robert the stopper. The, uh, the doctor took over 45 seconds to assess him and or if i'm wrong about 40 seconds to assess him and by that time robert had recovered from the punch that he took from stopper hey sorry from george ashi then the fight continued but george ashi got uh, caught robert with a lot of shots in which he george ashi too could have finished the fight and i i i, I think george ashi may have used a little bit experience or was just being cautious because if the fight travels a longer round and you use and you use a lot of energy in the earlier fight then you are going to burn out then the later rounds uh robert may come in but i think he had robert where he wanted him right from round three he he caught him several times in which he could have pulled a stoppage on robert but he did not. He was still taking it slow. Then in the fifth round, he was lucky. A wrong bet caught him and he fell. He went back and he was held by the ropes. I think referee Roger Banner should have called it. But they, according to the boxing rules, any other place apart from your feet, your feet, that is when it should be called a knockdown. But the IBF rule which is the IBF belt they were fighting for. They were fighting for the IBF Intercontinental African Championship, which they were fighting for. That rule says that, it continues and says that, or if the uh, boxer is, is hanging helplessly on the ropes. So briefly, George Ashi hanged on the ropes. He was saved by the ropes. If it's not for the ropes, he would have gone down. It wasn't as if it was just a step backward, just a step backward, then he hung on the road. No. It was about two, three step backwards, then he hung on the road. So you could see that if the if the ropes wasn't there, Judge Ashi would have gone down. So I think it should have been called a knockdown, in my humble opinion. But other school of thought disagree, thinking that since his glove or knee did not touch the ground, it shouldn't have been. It's up for debate. We can the debate can still continue. But Robert, when, when George Ashi was in that critical condition, did not attack. Robert, that was when it, it, it was very glaring to me that there was something wrong with Robert. He wasn't himself. Your opponent is off and he was just standing there looking at him and the referee and George Ashi recovered and continued the fight. And I think that that is the only round you can fairly give to robert because in the fight george ashi was the aggressor throughout he was looking to land the significant punches and he walked down the bigger man so you could see that the, he had a ring generalship on the day the fight traveled to the eighth round and stopper got stopped stopper had to walk out of the ring by his fans there was a little bit bit of confusion when referee just uh when referee banner did this he did not do it twice to signal the uh just to, to signal the end of a, about you must go like this but he just did this then robert was down he started counting then someone from george ashley's team entered the ring at that point, the rule says, if if your corner man climbed the canvas, you would be disqualified or you would be regarded as being disqualified. At that point, he should have been, Judge Ashi, the referee should have stopped counting and disqualified Judge Ashi. But to be fair to the referee, he did not see because Stopper was in the corner. He was facing Stopper. And the incident happened behind him. So referee Roger Bano did not see the incident. I think George Ashi, if for any reason, should should have should 
should go hard on his corner man because a fight that he was clearly about to win. If referee Roger Bano had turned his head for a second, he would have given the victory to Stopper. Based on the rules, he would have given the rules. He would have given the victory to Stopper. That means his corner man has stolen a victory for him. So I think George Ashi should be hard on his corner man. And the corner man must know the rules of the game they are participating in. You can't climb the, the canvas if the fight, if a round is in section. You can't even just get close. That is why the three of you, your, your, your coach, assistant trainer, and your catsman are asked to sit just in your corner, not, not to even lean on the ropes. Because if you, immediately you lean on the canvas, you are deemed to be throwing, you, you are, it's regarded that you want to throw in the towel or give up or pull your fighter out of the fight. So you don't touch the ring. You stay off the ring. But he, out of excitement, I don't know, I don't know the kind of ecstasy mood he was in, entered the ring at the blind side of the referee. If the referee had turned his back and seen him, the referee would have st uh, stopped the fight and ruled in favor of Stopper, no matter how Stopper was down. But a quick one, in response, Another guy responded by entering the ring. When he entered the ring, Robert the Stopper Quay got disqualified immediately. He entered the ring right in front of Roger Bano. So Roger Bano saw it and disqualified Robert the Stopper Quay. And I think that was a fair ruling. The, the first one happened at, at his blind side, but with the corner man from Robert, he saw it. I, I wouldn't, he was a fan. He, he wasn't a corner man. He was a fan. And they later carried Robert out of the city, uh, out of the arena. And I think that was disgraceful. He wasn't gracious in defeat. Robert should have stood there, congratulated uh, George Ashi because two warriors who have shared the ring, when you come out a victor, you are praised. And when you come out a loser, you must show respect to the victor. Robert did not do that. Though he has done that subsequently, he should have done that in the ring. That's a great sportsmanship. He shouldn't have walked out the ring. He should not have done that. He should have shown respect to George the Red Tiger Ashi in the ring. Yes, that is what good sportsmen do. And I think, Robert, this is a learning curve for him. His talent is not just enough. He must put in the works. He must put in the works and forget all those unnecessary shenanigans. He must put in the work. He is very talented, but talent can take you far if you don't put in the work. Facts are facts. Robert must wake up. His team is power promotion. Must be on him. The likes of Isaac Edua Mankwa must be on top stopper. To become the talent, he, he shouldn't be another talent who did not reach his full potential. Just because he is not having time in the gym. He is not putting in the head. There was too much arrogance on the part of Stopper. He should be, I'm not saying he should be humble, but he should respect others. He should respect all opponents. He, uh, I don't think for the past three years, Robert has even gone six rounds. For the past three years, Robert has not gone six rounds. He fought a guy, I think, 20, 20 December. That fight traveled just about four rounds. He was a Togolese international. Then another fight that traveled another four rounds. Then Nukpeda ended in round one. So in about three years, in about three years, Robert has not even done 12 rounds of boxing. And he would be rusty. It's just natural. So he must keep busy. I'll urge his promotional team to keep him busy. And always be on him to be disciplined, put in the way. A boxer must have an attitude. I don't have a problem with that. But outside the boxing, you must accord others the due respect. Outside boxing, you must accord others the due respect. You can't be arrogant throughout. When it's about your training, you must be disciplined and put in the works. Even the likes of Floyd Mayweather, they have attitude. 
by the work. Ali, they have attitude by the work. Tyson Fury, they have attitude, they work. They put in the work. Azuma Nelson has attitude. He is a talker. He will tell, he, he will tell you, I'll beat you. She's a boy and the likes. They were trash talking, but he would beat you because he knows what he has put in the way. Robert talks trash, but does not put in the way. He relies on his talent, and his talent failed him this time. Uh, the Red Tiger showed that he is the much experienced boxer. He is a Commonwealth champion. He could have reached the world level if he had much support. And he showed that in the ring that he is the superior boxer. He is the master of the game. And he is coming in with the tactics. He can follow the tactics. And he can get the victory at the end of the day. Robert, the stopper queen, should have done the same and made the fight go be more competitive. It was very competitive, but he could have with the level of talent. George Ashi just cooled him, and George Ashi shows that he is the master. Congratulations to the Red Tiger, and I'm very happy for him. This victory is coming at this stage of his career, 37 years. There's still more for him to do and give to the sports. He can still fight at the world level if he has the opportunity. Now he with Probolium joining forces with Box of Friends Sports Promotion, I think he can compete at the world level. Even if he doesn't get the world title fight, he can compete at the world level. And even if he wins, his name would be in the top rankings. I wish him all the best. And besides, um, besides there are other things that happened on the night that were exciting, the security was super, super tight. The vice president was in the building, so the security was tight. The atmosphere was electric. What other thing that happened? What other thing that happened on the fight day besides the fight? One thing I observed about the undercuts was that, let, let me be fair, the undercuts, the undercuts were not much competitive. Most of the fights were ending in the second or third round. Only Daniel Gosh, the Daniel Gosh even decided to get round, so he took his opponent to the third round. I realized if Daniel Gosh wanted to finish him, he would have finished him. And I, I one thing I'm looking for is a fight between Mohamed Ayikwe, the Golden Star, and um, this guy, the Black Spider, Michael Laban. I think it's time, it's time for them to fight. They are the two top guys in the flyweight division and they must face each other and it will be an exciting fight it may not be big as this i would have for if i had all the rights I, I think the two boxers should have would be built a little more before that fight happens but ayikwe has the national title he has had his voluntary defense maybe it's time for for michael laban to have a title shot as uh a shot at the national title so that fight would also be an exciting fight looking at the south pole versus octodos and i think it would be a good one if the two young lads meet not i preferably i don't want it sooner maybe it should go they should build a fight for it to enter next year then it becomes very explosive both boxers should get about two more wins under their belt then the fight becomes more explosive they become well known they are known but more money goes into the production and it becomes a very very exciting fight i wish them all the best especially those two lads they perform at the highest level expensive boxer was also on the bill he closed the show that day with uh with a knockout over george oh, i've forgotten his name george George Crapper against George Crapper. He knocked George Crapper out in the second round. And it was a very, very, very exciting night of boxing. I think the undercard and the uh, and the, and their competitors should have the competition or the level of those should have been up there a little for it to make it exciting right from the first bout to the ultimate bout. But it all it was a good fight. Boxing fans enjoyed the fight, and Robert the Stopper. let's listen to his apology 
for his fans. Uh, let's listen to his apology for his fans. Um, Pictures of videos you are seeing now from 29studios.com and the Ace Power Promotions. Thank you for watching. Stay positive. Remember, there is no limit to greatness. If you have not subscribed, please do. And also, stay positive. Au revoir.